Baron the Warp Spinster here. Thank you for joining me today. We are still going to be doing circles and I want to try something that I mentioned last week, which was, well, last week we pieced circles, a circle into another piece of fabric. And I mentioned that it would be kind of fun to do a print in the circle in the middle. And then I progressed to having strips on the back here and then the circle have strips, but be positive negative effect, which possibly is not a very good explanation, but basically that's what we're going to do today. I also talked about having a brightly colored ring that goes around the circle. Not sure if I want to do that or not, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to do this as a maquette on a smaller scale because if I try to do a larger piece we'll be here till Christmas and while I do like spending time with you I know we all have lives that <laughs> we have to do something besides quilting and watching videos besides which you wouldn't want to watch me till Christmas anyway so I am going to start with the base piece and I'll, I'll put the circle on top and I'm not going to piece it today. I'm just going to applique it because it will have lots of seams crossing the perimeter of the circle and that will be a little trickier to piece because I have to manage those seams which means I would have to stay stitch around it etc etc. And for playtime I just want to worry about the positive negative aspects of it and not the particular construction. So I'll be doing it probably the base piece about this size and it's going to have a black strips cutting through it spliced into it so it will change size a little bit I'll have to square some things up if I wanted to be really particular about it I could do all of the strips one inch wide and then when I spliced it it would put it back to the same dimensions but I don't care so much about that I can square it up afterwards I want to do different widths of strips going through, I think. I make it a little larger than this. So we will get started with deciding on what size I want to do here and then just do a rough cut of that. I'm gonna press that a little bit, cut some strips of the black and leave enough for a circle because this is going to be the base of the circle and then the strips through the circle will be white. So this will be black on white, and the inset circle will be, or the applique circle in this case, will be white strips through black. So let me get that kind of organized and I'll come back. I have the white backing piece with some black strips to insert. And then I have some left of the black with some white pieces to insert. So this is going to be the limitation of my size for the circle, but. I think that will be fine. I'm not going to worry about that until I finish with this base piece. Um, the reason I have chosen to do the black through white on the base and white through black on the circle is because the circle is going to be placed on top of the base, obviously, and there will be less shadow through if the circle is predominantly black and the base is predominantly white. If I did it the other way, then there would be a lot of shadow through on the circle. My first step then is going to be to just splice some strips into this white base and want them to be kind of random. Got a little elbow in there. At different angles, there are different widths and these will, of course, look narrower once they are, <laughs> the seams have come out of them. One thing that I could do is if I, for example, slice this one to insert this piece, before I put that piece in, I could take this section of the white that I've cut off and piece some things in there. I don't think I want to do that in this case. I think I want to have them going the full width and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to take out my ruler, which really isn't going to be long enough for this. I wouldn't have to make these strips equal or a consistent width. And 
I could do the curved would be kind of interesting too. That, that's for another day. Let's try this first, see if the concept works <laughs> before we get too excited about that. So here is where I could, I don't know why I talked about that instead of demonstrating it. One of the reasons that I don't want to piece it is because I dismantled a queen size sofa bed yesterday and the day before and my fingers are still a little stiff. You know when you buy something like that you really want it to be sturdy but oh my gosh taking it apart. They, <laughs> I really hate staple guns I have learned and they must have had a blockbuster of a sale on staples that are this long and like the size of a 10 penny nail. Oh my word. <laughs> I got it done. So I, the pieces are small enough. I can get them out to the curb or into a dumpster, which was the purpose. The reason I did that because no one will pick up a sofa bed because they're so heavy. Anyway, so my fingers are a little stiff. Um, if you see some funny things going on, it's because they're a bit stiff yet. Now, I just don't think I want to do that. What do you think? I'm sure you are yelling at me in the screen. I know you tell me that you do that on a regular basis and that's good. It means you're <laughs> thinking about how you would do it instead of this woman who doesn't quite know what she's doing. And I don't know. If you wanted a sort of Mondrian look, I guess you could do that. I don't think I do. So I am going to splice that in there and then come back and we'll do one more splice through that and then I'll just do the rest off camera because you don't really need to watch all of that. And I am going to cut this down a little smaller so it's easier to maneuver in the machine. And I will be careful doing this, of course, because I've got bias here. Fortunately, straight here, but bias on these two sides. So now we have decision time for how we're going to press this seam. Ordinarily, if I want a strip to sort of rise up or be higher, or look like it's on top of the base piece, then I will press toward that strip. And that's what I did on my first seam for two reasons. One, to, to lift that black strip up off the surface, but also because I didn't want to risk shadow through. Because this is a, a fairly fine white, I would see the shadow, I could see the shadow through from the black, especially if this black starts to ravel. So I could trim that black back a little bit. And this is all assuming I want the black piece to be lifted. Then when, because this strip is less than an inch wide, it, the seams are going to overlap each other. They aren't going to fold nicely into each other. If you have one inch, then a quarter inch comes in, quarter inch comes in, and they'll just sort of meet in the middle instead of overlapping. But in this case, they're going to overlap, which gives me bulk there, which means <laughs> I could trim these seams and still press it toward the black. If I press it toward the white, then I run a higher risk of having it shadow through. Now I've got two layers of white here that are covering up the black and that might be sufficient. Looks like it's not too bad. Although I am going to get a little, just a little shadow of the seam because there's an edge of a seam there. That would lift the white up and the black will then recede and look like it's sunken a little bit. I don't know that I mind that much in this case. I think I am going to press these open, however, which means I'm going to still have to do a little trimming because I will have that still have that overlap of the black back here. And this will not be a problem if I have a strip one inch or wider. Or I could, hmm, that sort of equalizes the bulk there if I have some overlap on just those single layers of black. If I have all these layers of the seams overlapping, then that's, that's more bulk than I want there. That's pretty, 
you can't feel it, but that's quite bulky here. So I think I'm going to press them open and that will also help to minimize the possibility that these threads, these roots <laughs> coming out from it are going to end up showing in the, that they'll cross over here. And then once I quilt it, layer and quilt it, you'll see these black threads running through. You know that story. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and press those toward the black with that little bit of overlap. And I think that's still going to be okay. Now, in terms of lining up the edges, again, because this is not an inch wide, these edges are not going to line up properly anyway. It's because we haven't inserted anything to make up for what we lose to the seams. And I know that I'm going to have to trim this up when I'm finished and I'm okay with that. So even if it were the proper width for the, these to line up again, I still, <clears throat> excuse me, I still would plan on doing some trimming just because frankly, I'm not in the mood to get these lined up perfectly and then, you know, pin and rip and all that to get it perfect. I don't care because I'm going to trim it anyway. So I will do that pressing and then we'll make another. That pressed up quite nicely, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. It actually distributes the bulk of that part of the seam here and part of the seam underneath, of course. This block will get handled some more and this black may ravel more. So before I quilt it, I will go in and make sure that there aren't black threads that are hanging out under the white. All right, for my next cut, I may have to go down and get my longer ruler, <laughs> is going to be, let me go get my 24 inch. All right, that's much better. There's my next cut. Now I can choose to match these up pretty well. I think that is the choice I'm going to make. I'll see how I do. Insert a strip going there. Do we have that little elbow in there? Karen Marie Laura, what were you thinking? All right. So I will do that and then I'll continue making cuts and get at least a few strips inserted and we'll proceed from there. When I'm trying to match up these two seams so that when it crosses this, it looks like a continuous line, I'm going to put them right sides together and just visually down here it matches up. I can slide it up. Make sure it matches up there. Just let it slide down and put a pin there. Put a pin in it. And then I continue to sew that seam and I may have to pull this one back as I sew because of the width of my presser foot. But no big deal. Now that strip was cut one inch wide and you can see then that the dimensions are maintained and I could line up those edges. So one inch wide is the magic number if you want to splice in something and keep the same dimensions. And on a circle that can be important because if you cut it and do something wider, it's going to not look like a circle any longer. It's going to be stretched out into an oval. Now I'm going to make some more cuts. Now, if I have an odd angle here, this one was easy because they're at right angles to each other. This one is not. I can't just lay it down and sew it anywhere because then it's not going to match up. And I can't just assume it's going to be okay if I do this because I've got the quarter inch seam with those, which throws things off. So the best way I've found to do it is to just kind of eyeball it with your finger holding about a quarter inch seam there. And then if it looks 
reasonable. I will put a pin in at a quarter inch width of seam there. And then turn it back and that looks pretty good. So I will leave that pin in so that doesn't move. And then I'll put a couple of pins on either side of that seam to hold it. And then take that pin out because of course I don't want to run over it. Lessons learned. And you who probably have a brain that <laughs> is functioning at full bore today, probably caught this earlier and were screaming at me. I had these three to match up and you can see they don't do perfectly well here, but here's the thing. Makes logical sense. My brain's just not working right today. Because I have different widths of strips here, I'm not making up for the seams that I have, what I've lost to the seams. So that when I go to try to match these up, of course I have some extra fabric on one side or the other. I had to ease a lot here to get it even this close. And then this had to be eased. In this case, the black had to be eased. Now, my solution was to ease in the fullness and there was quite a bit there because I have so much to make up in between these two and it's a very short space here. It was easier over here because I had more room to make up for it in between. That needs to be adjusted a little bit. Probably live with these if I press them again, but that I may have to fix. Anyway, so my solution was to ease those in and then when I, I got to the pressing, I wet this pretty thoroughly with, I used Best Press, but you could use Flatter or something else. Oh, there's a little sparrow watching me. Hello, little buddy. Hope he's not the one who just slammed himself into the bay window. I'm distracted, sorry. Then I got it pretty wet, fairly saturated with the best press and pressed the daylights out of it. Because when the fabric is wet and then you apply that much heat to it, it's going to shrink. So it's not the best solution. Two better solutions possibly, <laughs> probably, would be to just use one inch wide strips as this one was or to just use straight, strip, straight strips and applique them on. Now I've been thinking that I kind of want to do a wavy strip through here too. Maybe a bias black and white stripe. <laughs> but I, I, that's not what I'm trying to do today. So I think I'm going to do maybe one more or maybe two more strips and then we'll move on so that we aren't here till Christmas. Now another solution of course would be to put the circle on top <laughs> of that but that's not our best solution let's put it that way. So I've I've done what I can here lesson learned this is not perfect I know how to make it better. I could in fact um, adjust these a little bit more take out the seam but I'm not about that today. I'm just experimenting and testing, and now I've learned something that I should have known starting out. I think I'm gonna do a couple more cuts and then we'll come back and start on the circle. Here is our base piece, and I am, with all its imperfections, that's granted, but we learned some things, that's good. Now I want to work on the circle and to do that, I'm actually going to start out with a square of black and create the lattice or lath work. Oh, lath, and it's kind of crazy lath. You'd never want that in the wall, so I'm gonna call it lathable. <laughs> okay, you remember what I said about my brain not fully functioning. So I'll cut a square because, of course, things are going to get well, let me, let me restate that. I am going to save myself some grief and just applique white strips on. 
I will, they might even be raw edge. This is black, by the way. The camera is making it gray and it's making the white gray. Let me see if I can fix that. Maybe. Nope, that makes it worse. Okay. That's better. Anyway, sorry. If I applique it, I can start by cutting the circle out to begin with and then just applique across it and trim the applique pieces. If I want to piece it, so say I decide to do one inch wide strips to make my life easier, then if I cut it in a circle first, it's going to distort. It's going to have some distortion to it just because I'm imperfect. <laughs> And I don't want to deal with that. So I would do it in a square, do the lath work, and then cut the circle from that. I think I might do that and do it with just one inch strips. Maybe at some point I'll, you know, do a bias of a black and white stripe. <laughs> So I'm going to cut a square of this and do some lath work on that. Same process as before, but I'm just going to use one inch wide strips. Checking back in because I'm sure you knew I was going to change my mind several times. I did piece one strip in, this one, and it's an inch wide and I was going to proceed, but I really wanted different widths of strips. So I did decide to do some, but they aren't bias, some straight strips, but turn the edges under. I didn't use a bias tape maker. I just sort of did it by hand and eye and added on three more strips. And of course, then I had to decide how to give it time to focus. It is having a hard time focusing today. All right. I decided that I needed to try a couple of different effects on the applique. I'm going to try to get this refocused. I'll be back. Okay, sorry about that. The light lock was throwing things off. So here's the first strip that I applicated. And the first time I did the one side I did with a zigzag, could have made it narrower but I stuck very close to the edge. I didn't want it to go over into the black. I did a little bit here and then I adjusted so that it stitched down the edges very securely so that a presser foot or a hopper foot wouldn't get caught when quilting it. But it still was a bit too much for the effect I want. It would depend on how much attention you wanted to draw to these. You could draw a lot of attention. It would be a different look, nothing wrong with it, just not the look I was looking for. And in the end, I just did a straight stitch on the very edge. And you can see this is <laughs> a handmade bias turn under. And then I did some smaller ones as well. And again, just stitched at the very edge because that's, that's the look that I like for this. Now, another way you can do this sort of thing is to turn under just one edge, then lay it down where you want it. Sew this just as a seam, then flip it over and applique the other side. So that's another option. You would have one side stitched with an applique and one side not. So I'm going to do one of those just to show you how that looks. Another thing, well, I do have a um, stabilizer underneath it. Another thing is that because I'm going to cut a circle from this, I'm going to focus on this area here, not the corners, because I know the corners are going to get trimmed off when I make a circle. So I'm going to focus more on here. This is a little iffy. That's probably going to be on an edge. So I really want to make sure that I'm, I'm getting enough in the center area rather than the corners. Now, if I do this, then I have to be aware that that's going to put 
the tape a little bit over that way. But I'm going to go ahead and sew that seam and then come back and show you about turning it. So I sewed a seam with the raw edge here as the guide. And now I can just flip over the edge that's turned under and stitch that. This will mean that it will look, I guess, uneven in that this side is going to be top stitched and this is not. Of course, you could go back and top stitch this side as well. It, um, I don't know quite the advantage of that, except that you, I think it's easier to sew a straighter line <laughs> with this than if I'm trying to muscle around the narrow strip. So that gives me a little straighter line. I wouldn't say it's probably perfect, but. So I'm going to top stitch this side and we'll have some things to compare then, how they look. And it works fine. It's a little bit different look. If somebody comes up close, they can see that there's a difference between those. Or I could just, if I didn't like that the two sides were different, I could go in and top stitch. I found it helpful after I stitched the raw edge. When I turned it over, it was helpful if I pressed it so that I had a little more control over a consistent width in it. And that, I think, is about all I'm going to do for the circle at this point, for this trial anyway. And I need a circle, of course, that's going to fit within that and also place on here. I don't want to cover up too much of the background because I put some work into that. <laughs> it's not perfect where the things come together, but I had two choices for circles. This one, this one obviously is too big. So this is a Quilters Groove Pro Circle, eight inch, which means because this is a long arm ruler, this is actually probably seven and a half inches. Um, they mean eight inches after you finish stitching and because the hopper foot runs along here and the hopper foot is the needle is a quarter inch from the edge then yeah anyway so that's going to fit okay and i can choose where i now if i i could get a larger circle or i could use a compass but again wanted it to fit within there would might have been useful for me to decide on the size of circle before i did all of this but here we are lessons learned so i could go something like that i could miss that intersection entirely but i don't think i want to still need to catch all of the black on the edge there. I could move it over this way some more. And I think I'm going to go with that. Um, I'm afraid of this slipping, so I'm actually going to use a, not a glue stick, <laughs> a white pencil. Here we go. This is a Bohin white leaded pencil. So I'm going to draw around the circle. And you know, guess what? I'm going to have scraps <laughs> left from this that I can use in something else. Bonus! All right, hopefully I have actually made marks all around there. And I shall cut that out with scissors. Here's the circle. Here's what's left. Honestly, I'm already getting some ideas for how I might use this. That's pretty cool of itself. So we're saving that. And now we get to decide where we're going to put this on this background. And I don't know. 
We've got lots of choices. I really don't want to cover up that intersection too much. And I don't know that I really want it centered. So, I'm going to put it way off to one side. I don't want to put it down in this corner because that, I really want some of that showing. And I want to try to arrange it so none of these is lining up. Or maybe I want it to line up. Maybe not. I think probably not. But of course I have lots of choices for where I put that. And thinking about how that looks. I think I might want another piece here. And it's looking pretty busy. There's lots going on. One of the ways we could calm that down, I think, would be to do a brightly colored ring around the outside of the circle. or put a circle down first on here and then applique that on top. And we'll need to find a piece of fabric big enough to do that under there, but let's just kind of fake it for the, the look for the moment. And it doesn't necessarily end up being yellow. Oh, I think that adds a nice spark. You know, I'm thinking, what about red? And then it might be a piece that goes with Alice wondering. Hmm. I do kind of like that yellow, though. But I just don't know if I have a big enough piece to be larger than this circle. I'm going to go rummage around in, in my bright fabrics. Yeah, I used my compass to draw this circle. You probably can't see it very well, but I'll be able to see it to cut out. All I did was take the circle from which I cut this, planted my center of my compass there, and then just extended it out as much past the added width that I wanted, and then just planted it into a round. Here's my yellow circle. Let's see how it's going to look. And of course, it's a little larger, so it's going to hide even more intersections that I worked so hard on. But oh well, it's too bad it. <laughs> I should hide the one that was really not so very good. But we'll put it, say, right there and then that on top and that really does help, doesn't it? Without it, it's okay. But I think I would need to have the lath work on both of these be more dense in order for it to be a more, let me think about that. Maybe I would need this more dense in order to accentuate the positive negative. But that would mean more black, which wouldn't black, which would not differentiate from that. Hmm. What do you think? This looks like a little man, a little star man. Here's his head and his arms. Now that I've seen that, I can't unsee it. You're welcome for doing that for you too. Now, put that on top and I, I really do like that better. When I still have stabilizer behind here, so I will cut off the excess of that. And I will use stabilizer when I do this applique, machine applique. And, but I will cut a ring of stabilizer to go around it so there isn't a bunch in the middle that I have to then take out. That will help to minimize the shadowing through here, the black through the yellow there. And 
I think that'll work. I think red might still work too if I could find the right red print or solid so that it would go with Alice. Let's think a minute about what we learned. We did lots of trying and lots of learning today. First off, if you are going to piece in or splice in strips that are at odd angles, obtuse or acute angles, then you want to use one inch strips because then you add in what you lose from the seam allowances. If you do it narrower than that, then you've got extra fabric here, which you have to ease in between here. If you go wider than cut one inch, then you use more than you allowed for in the seams. So you're going to have to ease the other direction. I had quite a bit of ease here because there's not much distance between here to take in that extra fabric that I had from these being narrower strips. So I doused it with some best press and then press my iron just in this area of fabric, not on the, the black. And I wet pretty much just this area here with the, the best press and then put my iron on that so that the, the wet fabric plus the heat of the iron shrank it enough that it helped that a bit. This is not the best solution, but it's the one I had given what I had there. Now, of course, that's all going to be covered up anyway, but that's one thing we learned. So either use one inch cut strips or appliques. So then for the circle, I did one piece strip, one inch cut strip, and then appliqued the rest. Tried different appliques. I did a zigzag close to the edge there, but not over the edge. And then in the end, I just did straight edge stitching on the applique. Then I tried the stitch down fold over for the applique and that worked fine. That was okay too. Now, I would love to hear in the comments what you would do differently, what you would add, what you would subtract, um, in which ways I was really dense today. There were several of those. And especially what you would do differently so that you can start to be thinking about how you might do this in your own quilt. The a couple of things you might do differently would be to accentuate different parts of these lath strips. So you could do many different colors of lath strips on either one of these. I don't know if I'd do both, but I might, for example, do bright colors for these strips on here, leave it on a black background, and then I don't think you would need this ring. Doesn't mean you couldn't have it, but I don't think you'd need it as much as I think this needs it. You could make this a brightly colored base with black strips or white strips, either one, see how that would contrast. You could use different colored threads, brightly colored threads to do the applique. You could of course run stitches all around if you wanted to, decorative stitches from your machine in different colors. Or you could run some black decorative stitches around here and some white in there if you wanted to add in more of this sort of look, fractured look without piecing more, appliquing more. What I would like to try, actually, that I think would be cool, would be to do a true positive negative and split it down the middle so that I would have this half be black through white, this half be white through black of the base. And then the same thing on the circle, do half a circle that is white through black on this side and then on this side the opposite so that you would really get this positive negative on either side of a line where you split it. And I might even make that split a one inch cut. 
wide strip of black and white stripe. I think I'm going to take a look at that on my iPad, sketch it out on my iPad first before I go to all the work of putting all of this together and see how it looks. Might be good, might really not make any difference at all. So I do wanna check that out. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some things that were useful to your own designing thinking processes. Next week, I think I'll take a break from circles and work with my sketchbook. This morning I woke up and had, as a result of dreams, which were a little strange, some, but they were quilt, quilting kind of strange, not spooky nightmare kind of strange. All right, let me explain that. <laughs> I was teaching a class in person and in my sister and brother-in-law's garage, I don't know why, and I was passing out brightly colored strips and they were just amazed. And then I found some more and passed out some more and that was, you know, just astonishing to them. I don't know. And then one of my students wanted to increase the size of a design she was working on. So basically she wanted to project it on the wall or a piece of paper on the wall <clears throat> and enlarge it. So I took her to a physics lab. I don't know why, but it worked for her. But then I lost myself. I mean, it was, I lost my cell phone. It was weird. Anyway, I did have some ideas when I woke up. So I sketched them out in my sketchbook and I've been doing this for years. Um, mostly during the night, I, if I wake up and I can't sleep, then I challenge myself to come up with some ideas. Sometimes I just have them when I wake up um, after my brain has been relaxed. And so I have a, a sketchbook that I keep all these ideas in. Some of them I have made from what's in the sketchbook. Some I have not yet and some I never will. They made more sense in the middle of the night than they did in the morning. So we might dive into that and take a look at how I use the sketchbook and maybe something from there that we could work on. Perhaps one of the five ideas that I had this morning when I woke up. So that will be next week, I think. I hope to see you then. Thanks again for joining me here. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you next week. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. <laughs>